Let's begin. So, obviously, the aim of this fight was to stay out of range, and I had to come in range very quickly and then exit again. As you can see, he's very tall. Uh, Reagan was very well known for dangerous knees. So a lot of fakes were going to happen, a few low kicks, and when I did low kick, I was supposed to double up on the low kicks and land a couple while I was in there. I don't think I did this, but a technique that I did do a lot was the slap. So every time I throw a combination, I would slap my way out and change angle because if I stayed in the pocket, Reagan was a very strong counter fighter, so I had to be first, second, and if I wasn't second, so I was first, and I was he countered, I had to be third as well. So first and third, first and second, and leave. Lots of faking, lots of movements. Every time I felt that he was gonna attack me, I had to shift. As you guys just saw there, he bounces off the rope. I've seen in a few of his other fights that he bounces off the rope and throws a knee if you chase him. So that's why I actually stopped before we got to the ropes in case he bounced off and stuck that horrendously long knee in my face. Um, also on the inside, I had to counter, but as you can see, I'm slapping off there, getting off the rope and back to the center because he was very, very good at throwing knees. And as you're gonna see later on, he actually drops me with a knee. Up until then, I believe I was doing pretty well in this fight. I'm getting close to the ropes there, so I slap and angle off. He still managed to throw his knee, but because I slapped, I managed to get away from the knee, so there wasn't that much of a heavier impact. Uh, another thing I had to watch out for was high kicks. He had a very, very hard, dangerous high kick. I know he knocked out Joe Nutterwhite with a beautiful one, uh, so I was trying to be wary of those as well, leaning back and getting out of range. Going to the body, going to the head, a lot of volume was the goal of this. That's me slapping him off there, slapping him again to just get back to the center, just stay off the rope because that's where he was most uh, dangerous with his knees. And if he did kick me, I had to counter as quickly as possible just to score those points back. Uh, as you see, sometimes I come into attack and he throws that countering low kick. Uh, that's me there attacking with a little bit of volume just so I'm always up on the chessboard uh, theoretically. So. Depends who your judges are as well. Like a lot of judges like to score uh, forwards pressure. That's me angling off there just to get away from that jumpy knee. He uh, kicked me in the balls, but not very hard. So uh, yeah, that's again, volume there. And there we go. There's the demonstration of the bouncing knee off the rope. But luckily I angled off. Uh, I don't have any pads that I recorded for this camp to show you guys working on stuff with Eugene, but it was pretty similar to Fernando Groenhardt. This fight actually, followed directly after Fernando, so it was a pretty uh, similar game plan and uh, it was working. Here we are starting round two and uh, Doug City pretty much said keep the same thing as that plan was uh, working beautifully. He didn't really have too much of an answer to, to what I was doing to him. He didn't deal with the angles after my attacks very well. He was still very fixated on walking in with that Dutch style guard, landing that knee as he tried to do there and get me in the head. He tried, started to try to tie me up as in this fight there is the one rule, uh, sorry, the one knee rule. You can grab a knee once and you have to let go. As you can see, he's coming with a little bit more firepower than he did in the second round as he knows that he lost the first round. So I'm pretty wary on this, but uh, I'm using that low kick to try and land those hooks as well afterwards, but a lot of volume to the body uh, in the second round because like I said in my uh, breakdown with Fernando, these Surinamese people are extremely, extremely strong and his Dutch guard was very, very strong. So I started mixing up by going to the body and going to the head just because it was uh, easier to land the body. I didn't uh, angle off there and got caught by a hard knee and they started to accumulate a little bit uh, in this round to be honest with you. But yeah, as you can see, I'm mixing up between the body and the head and uh, pushing off and angling off again to stay in the center. We start to get a little bit scrappy in this round because he puts the pressure on. So I start to answer that pressure with a bit of my own pressure and a bit of my own uh, volume. Reagan was a cool dude as well. You can see us, we have some mutual respect there. We always touch gloves and stuff if we have a little break. Uh, he's a good guy, good fighter. Actually went on to become the champion. Beat the living piss out of Nikki Holskin which was awesome, but also gutting for me because I believe I was better than Reagan and uh, that I beat him on this night. So it would have been nice to fight Nikki. I just didn't get uh, 
very good terms with the 1FC contract, so I decided not to sign with them. And uh, we ended up in the UFC, so I guess it worked out well. Anyway, that inside pocket fighting just back there with uh, about a minute to go, I roll with the punches on the inside. So as I hit him and he counters, I roll and counter straight away. So I'm not rolling under the punch, I'm just uh, rolling with it and punching. But as you can see, the knees are starting to add up. I'm a little more static now. I am a little more tired because I had a huge amount of volume coming out. But uh, yeah, see my face there? I had a little bit of a wince, a little bit of a flinch. And I know that drop's coming, boom. Boom. So it was the body rip that put me down. This is the first time I've ever been down in my career, by the way, out of about 60 odd fights. So I was like, holy shit. I went down finally and uh, it wasn't a fun experience, especially in the body. And because I knew there was only a little bit of time left, I just went after him as hard as I could. So here you're gonna see me, I sort of hold my breath and just start throwing. Because I know that clap is coming, so I don't want him to come in and hit me again. He does anyway. As we are in the third round, third and final round, I know that I obviously lost that round, clear as day. I'm still very wary of Reagan bouncing off the rope and throwing that knee. Uh, he's definitely coming after me with that knee again. That was a lot of firepower we threw at each other just then, but I feel pretty good now, like I've managed to get my stomach back, uh, my lungs are working again. He's still pretty adamant on hitting me there again because to be honest, if you do get touched there again, you're pretty much gonna go down because it doesn't really come back. Uh, it's not like your head, uh, they're getting hit in the body. Some of you guys might have, some of you won't have, but it is horrible and it's very, very hard to actually stand up from, a, uh, from an eight count after a heavy body shot. I was pretty happy that I actually managed to get up. But in this round, I start to mix it up and uh, back to the body and head, leading with the low kick. Oof, that was a good knee. So he's starting to hang on there and knee me a couple of times, which, by the way, is illegal. Mic check. Yeah, it's still going. And uh, I'm just keeping the volume up because in my eyes, if I win this round, I will get an extra round. I did not read the rules properly because <laughs> I thought that was going to be an extra round. But obviously, there was no extra round. They just gave Reagan the win there. Bit of a dick kick wasn't too bad, just readjusted my cup a little bit. And on we go. Oh, fuck. All right, that sucked. A big gust of wind came, blew over my gimbal, and I had to stop talking. So I'm gonna start again and keep talking. Into the third round, I'm coming in hot. Oh, that knee there just landed beautifully. As you can see, I still tried to angle off and get away from that knee. I'm still hunting his body. But uh, as you can see, I'm starting to move backwards a little bit as I'm hurting, but I've got Doug in my corner. He's egging me on. He loves a good fight. So I'm still pretty focused. I'm pretty in it, still fainting. And uh, Reagan's sort of pushing forwards now, just trying to disregard the shots I'm throwing at him. So sticking and moving probably would have been the best thing, uh, being first and angling off, but I am a little bit tired and he is digging that left knee in quite a lot and it does hurt. I think what would have really turned the tide for me a bit was doubling up the low kicks inside and outside like Eugene told me to. I didn't really uh, do that at all, to be honest. It wasn't something that I was familiar with or trained a lot with. Sometimes it can be hard to uh, you know, really ingrain something into your uh, game plan in a, in, a, in a short time, in eight weeks, right? So maybe I didn't practice it enough or the eight count took that thought out of my head. But we're, yeah, hope you guys like that one. These aren't super technical breakdowns. They're just sort of guidelines of how I approached that fight. They were all a very, very long time ago. So sometimes uh, it can be hard to, to remember these fights as the level, oh fuck. All right, for the second time, the wind blew the gimbal over. I'm probably never going to do a video outside like this again because that's annoying and I hope it hasn't ruined the breakdown. Anyway, guys, let me know if you want me to break down another one of my fights, even somebody else's fight. You know, I'm not the biggest fan of talking about uh, myself, to be honest. So it would be cool to break down some other fights as well. Maybe I can give you a perspective on those. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, all that sort of stuff. Uh, stay safe, have fun, see you later.